All right. All right. Let me come back to my Zoom meeting here. Okay, hello ladies. Nice to see you. I do believe that I am live as well on Facebook, but I'm just gonna double check. And that seems to be working. So hello, hello, and welcome to, um, to the masterclass. Um, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna share my screen and get my, um, get my, uh, my slides up here. And I'll just move this for a second. Slideshow from beginning. There we go. All set to go. All right. So we are talking about, and if you are joining me on, um, on Zoom, if you can just make sure that you're muted, that would be fantastic. And uh, we are going to be, we're going to get started here. So this is um, a brand new masterclass. And what we're talking about today is how to really maximize fat burning. And really, this is not just about weight loss. I know that most women join the group because they want to learn how to lose uh, weight or fat specifically in a healthy way. And this is going to talk about how to lose fat and how to lose belly fat. But we're also going to be talking about how to boost energy. And we're going to be talking about just how to create vibrant health. And um, let me just make sure that I can get my, my slides to move. Okay. So really what we're talking about um, in, this, in this mastermind is we're going to talk about your ability to burn fat for fuel. And when I talk about this idea of burning fat for fuel, what I'm specifically talking about is your ability to take either dietary fat in the foods that you eat or stored fat either in your, in your blood or in your fat cells, pull it into your cells, into your mitochondria and turn that fat into energy, into ATP. Okay. That is what we're talking about here. And, and we're going to be talking, I'm going to help you understand why this ability to do that is going to be key, obviously to fat loss, right? Because we're burning fat, but also again, to having better energy and to improving your overall metabolic health. Um, so who is this workshop for? I want to make sure that if you're here, uh, you're here because you should be, <laughs> I don't want to waste your time. So um, if you, if you are a woman, if you join this group or you join this masterclass, because you want to learn about um, healthy weight loss and specifically fat loss. Uh, you want to learn how to do it in a way that uses the science of metabolism and the science of your hormones and the science of weight loss, as opposed to just going on a fat diet or, you know, going on a two, 1200 calorie diet or spending hours on the treadmill. You are in the right place because what I'm, oh, please mute yourself. If you are joining me on Zoom, I can hear a bit of that noise in the background. Um, so just make sure that you're, you're muted. But essentially what I'm gonna be teaching you today is sort of like how to make weight loss or fat loss a lot easier, how to make it effortless, how to ensure that you can get it off and keep it off. And what I'm gonna be teaching you today is really, really key to that. This So again, if that's you, you're in the right place. If you are a woman that has just noticed that in your 40s or your 50s or your 60s, your energy is tanking, you are waking up groggy, you, you, you always feel like you're dragging yourself through the day and you need coffee and sugar to just keep yourself going and getting through the day, you are in the right place because what I'm going to teach you is going to really help you to give you so much more energy and uh, if you are a woman that is here just because you want to learn how to move through perimenopause and menopause with the best health that you can have so that you can prevent uh, chronic disease that really um, can affect women postmenopause, so diabetes, metabolic syndrome, heart disease, then you as well are in the right place. And I thank you for being here. So what we're going to do in this workshop, my goals of what I want to do here is we're going to be talking about a concept called metabolic flexibility. And you may have noticed me teasing this concept um, throughout the whole month of September, but we're going to dive into what it is. And I'm going to help you to understand why it is so essential 
when it comes to fat loss and better energy and overall metabolic health. Then we're going to review like the five pillars of how to restore metabolic flexibility. So what are the five pillars that I use in my framework with my clients to make sure that I can teach them how to maximize fat burning so that they can have all of the above. And then finally, once we've gone through those five pillars, I'm gonna give you an action plan so that you can actually take something from this workshop and start implementing. Um, I'm gonna give you a lot of information today don't worry if it feels a little bit overwhelming because like I said at the very end, I'm gonna tell you sort of like, what is step one? Okay, what is step one so that you can start working on your own metabolic health, your own metabolic flexibility so that you too can maximize your fat burning potential. Does that sound good? All right, if you are watching me live on Facebook, I see there's 15 of you. If you wanna join me on, um, on Zoom, I'm gonna post the link for you right now. Um, it's in the comments. If you wanna join me live on Zoom, feel free to do so because at the end, I'm gonna do a Q&A for the women that are on Zoom with me, but you don't have to. Um, and I would love for you all to tell me where you are joining me from. So I've got about 15 of you on Facebook. I've got about 10 of you here um, on Zoom. I wanna know where you are joining me from. I love women who participate. And for those who participate, I'm giving away this book here. It's a book on metabolic flexibility. So I want you to tell me where you are from and I want you to participate throughout the workshop and uh, one of you will, will take that home with you, okay? Um, and if you are catching the replay, just put replay and still tell me where you are joining me from because you still have a chance to win the book on metabolic flexibility. Okay, so before we dive in, I know there's uh, potentially some of you that are brand new to the group, or maybe this is your first workshop with me. So I just wanna quickly tell you a little bit about who I am so that you know where you're getting this information from. Um, so I am, um, I'm a board certified health and wellness coach. Um, I did a lot of my studying with a Canadian company called Precision Nutrition. Um, I studied with them for about three years. I worked for them for about one year. Um, and from there, I really dove into everything, hormones, metabolism, perimenopause, menopause. And uh, for the past like seven years, I've been really trying to kind of piece together what on earth is happening to our bodies as we go through this transition. Um, and that's sort of become my passion. And a few things that you need to know about me is number one, um, my approach, I'm all about a lifestyle approach to, uh, to health and to weight management. Um, not a big fan of extremes, not a big fan of fad diets. I truly believe that weight loss is sort of like a benefit to health. And so um, although I, I, I promote this group as a fat loss group, just understand that I come to you from a perspective of really wanting to heal your hormones, heal your metabolism, and teach you how to lose uh, fat or, or manage your weight in a very healthy way. And that's sort of my passion and what drives me to do these workshops. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and dive in here. And let me just see why my uh, thing is not moving anymore. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to bust um, a limiting belief that can get in your way of seeing results. And I think that when a lot of women in their 40s, their 50s, their 60s, when I'm having conversations with them, a lot of women, and, and, and this is popular culture as well, this is what we're reading on the Google, is that the reason that women are gaining weight as they are aging, as they're going through perimenopause and menopause is because their metabolism is slowing down, okay? Uh, have you guys heard that before? Have you read that your metabolism is slowing down and therefore this is why you're gaining weight? Just put a yes in either the chat or in the comments. I can see lots of comments already from you ladies telling me where you're from, which is awesome. And I see it in the chats as well, but I'm curious to know if you have heard that before, that one of the reasons that you are gaining weight is because your metabolism is slowing down. Yes, I see Alicia said yes, Cassie said yes, Pamela said yes, Mackenzie, Jill, all right, awesome. Okay, so what I want you to understand is that this is 
it's 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 part of the puzzle is part of it right there is a little bit of a slowing down of the metabolism and what you need to understand is that that is because we are losing muscle mass okay so that is what slow, slows down our metabolism we lose muscle mass and um and therefore our metabolism slows down but not as much as you think okay but that is very incomplete more importantly we are starting to see a um we are starting to see that we are less metabolically healthy and that is going to have much more of an impact on our weight on our energy and on our health okay and the cool thing in my opinion is that we have a lot of control over our metabolic health like we can't control aging we can't stop menopause but when we start to look at why we're starting to see weight gain and low energy and poor health, it has a lot to do with our nutrition choices, our lifestyle choices, our movement choices, our sleep patterns, as well as our stress management. Okay. These are all having an impact on our metabolic health. So we have to stop blaming aging and we have to stop blaming menopause and we have to empower ourselves to be like, okay, there is something I can do about this. I have not lost control over my body. I do not have to just accept that this is happening. You still have a bunch of control. And that's why we're here today, because I want to show you just how much control you have over your metabolic health and how that is affecting your weight and your energy and just your overall health. Okay. Does that sound good? All right, let's see if, I don't know why my slides don't always want to move forward. Okay, and I really want to quickly show you what you can do when you take charge of your metabolic health. This is one of my clients post-menopause, um, you know, mid-50s, and um, this is what she achieved in the first sort of like 14 weeks of working with me. One of the main things I do with women is I help them to improve their metabolic health. And when you do that, you can take control. You can reduce inflammation. You can lose weight. You can have more energy. You can go to your doctor and come back with better blood work. And I'll stop right here and just say one of my recent ones with one of my clients she was about a year ago received a diagnosis that she now had type 2 diabetes and that is why she came to me and uh, fast forward one year later she had an appointment with her doctor they did blood work, blood work with her and her doctor was like oh my god keep doing what you're doing everything was improving so again this is not just about weight this is about weight energy and health okay all right so what we are talking about today is we are talking about something called metabolic flexibility and we're going to talk about why it is important i would like to know raise your hand have you heard of the term metabolic metabolic flexibility before or is this a term that you are brand new okay let me know in the comments in the chat and in the comments okay a couple of women raise their hands okay so you've heard of it yes from you but consider it brand new okay cool all right some women are saying no alicia's saying yes okay Yes, yes. It's definitely becoming more of a buzzword in, um, in the health and wellness space, which is a good thing, but it, it, it's certainly, we're starting to see this term pop up a little bit more. Uh, for some of you, it's new. Okay, cool. No problem. So um, if you're new to, 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 to my workshops, I'll tell you right now, I don't go super deep into the science. I don't get super techie. I like to explain things super, super simply. So I'm going to try and explain what metabolically, what metabolic flexibility is, and I'm going to use a super simple analogy and try to make it super easy to understand. Okay. Um, all right. So what is metabolic flexibility? So I'm going to start with a story. I really like to tell stories because I find that stories stick in our brain more than science. Okay. So while I was doing research for this particular workshop, um, I, I came across two women who happen to do a lot of research into metabolic flexibility. And um, I listened to them on a podcast and, uh, and, and their story to me was the perfect sort of way of introducing this concept to you. So these are two women who uh, they have like backgrounds in nutrition and biochemistry. And they happen to be two women that were training for an Ironman. And if you know what an Ironman is, it's, it's an endurance race or an endurance event where you're doing a, a very a, a combination of swimming 
um, uh, running and biking, but for a very long distance. And these women knew that most athletes that, that start an Ironman, what happens is they bonk or they hit the wall, which basically means that as they're moving through the event, they just completely run out of energy. And these women were like, okay, well, this doesn't make sense because we have plenty of energy on our body. It's called fat. Okay. We have all of this energy on our body. So the problem isn't a lack of energy. It's that the body isn't efficient at using the different sources of energy. So these two women set about trying to figure out how to become more efficient at burning carbohydrates as a form of energy and burning fat as a form of energy. And they train their bodies to perform on both of these types of fuel. And then they entered the Ironman. And in, when they share their story, they basically say how all these very fit and muscular men were falling down and couldn't keep up. And they just zoom right past them because they were metabolically flexible and their bodies knew exactly how to burn carbs and fat when needed. Okay. So that's just a little bit of a story to help you understand a little bit what this concept is all about. And now I'm going to give you a little bit of an analogy because I really like analogies because again, I want these, these, these concepts to kind of stick to your brain. So I want you to think of your body or think of your metab metabolism as okay. Like your body is a car and your metabolism is the engine. And so you can fuel, you have to put fuel into your body to, to, to fuel the engine. Right. And so for us, uh, we're, we're, when we're eating, right, we're giving our body fuel and our, our body can use that fuel and turn it into energy. And we can use that energy either right away, or we can store it for later use, right? Now, if your engine is not working properly, if your metabolism is not working properly, your body is not going to work properly and your quality of life is going to suffer. So if your metabolism, your engine is malfunctioning for whatever reason, you're gonna have poor energy, you're gonna end up with chronic disease, you're going to see a, uh, you're gonna see like problems with your sleep, uh, you're gonna experience brain fog, you're going to have weight gain or weight loss resistance, right? All of these things are gonna happen because your, your body is not functioning properly. And for your engine to function properly, you need metabolic flexibility. Okay, so again, going back to, to, these two, to these two researchers, metabolic flexibility is simply your body's ability to either burn carbs or burn fat and take those two different things and turn them into energy. And to your body, energy is called ATP. So what happens is carbs and fat go into your cell, into your mitochondria, which is like in the inner part of your cell, and they go through this very complex biochemistry process called the Krebs cycle and outcomes ATP. Now, metabolic flexibility means that you can do both of these things. But if you are metabolically unhealthy, you can't do both of these things. So it's kind of like a, a good way to think of it is kind of like a hybrid car versus a standard car. Okay. So hybrid is like the new upgrade, right? So a standard car can either can usually like forget diesel, but let's just say a standard car can burn fuel and that's it. And when the fuel runs out, you're stuck on the side of the road. If you have a hybrid car, you can run on fuel, but should you run out of fuel, your, your car can now switch over to electricity and get you to the nearest gas station because it has a backup system. So I want you to think of metabolic, uh, metabolic flexibility in the same way. If your body is metabolically inflexible, you're in a standard car. And when you run out of fuel, which is carbs, you're going to tank. You're going to stop. You're going to be on the side of the highway. If you have metabolic flexibility and your body can burn both carbohydrates and fat, you've got a backup system. And so when you run out of carbs, your body's like, no problem. I'm just going to start burning fat. Okay. Can you see how it would be to your advantage to have metabolic flexibility? Give me a yes in the chat and give me a yes if this is kind of making sense, okay? Because again, I don't like diving into the, um, into the, um, 
uh, into the science too much. And I'm just going to go through and mute a couple of people here because they can hear a little bit of background noise. Whoops. I'm trying to see who's muted or who's not unmuted. Okay. I think I've got everyone. Okay. Does that make sense? Everyone's giving me a yes. All right, everybody on Zoom, I'm getting a yes, yes, yes. Okay, perfect, awesome. Okay, so one thing that is really important for you all to understand is that your body loves carbs, okay? Glucose, sugar, that is what your body loves. And so as long as you have glucose, carbs, sugar, in your bloodstream or in your liver, because that's where it gets stored, your body will preferentially choose glucose as a fuel source as opposed to fat, okay? And we're gonna dive into what causes metabolic inflexibility. Just know that this is like a little bit of a, of a tease of, of, what that's, of, of why that's happening. But you need to understand that because um, you need to understand that basically when it comes to metabolic inflexibility, uh, what it means is that what can happen is that it, because we're, we're constantly using glucose, our body can literally forget, or because we're using carbs, our body can forget how to use fat, okay? And again, I teased this a little bit this month in, in some of the content that I put out there. And ultimately, it's kind of like a skill, right? It's kind of like if you grew up playing badminton and skiing, but as you got older and you ran out of time and you had to pick one sport and you decided that you were going to choose skiing and you skied every single day, well, your badminton skills are going to go down. And eventually you're going to become a really bad badminton player because you haven't done it in 10 years. Well, the same is true when it comes to burning carbs and burning fat because your body, it needs certain enzymes. It needs certain metabolic pathways in order to take fat and turn it into energy. And it's really a use it or lose it skill in your body. Okay, makes sense? All right. So when you are metabolically flexible, right? When you have the capacity to either burn carbs or burn fat or switch between the two, because this is not about ditching carbs. It's about being able to do both of them simultaneously, right? When you can do both of those things, you're going to have more energy right? You won't have the crash that you're maybe experiencing right now. You'll be able to skip meals because when I'm talking about burning carbs and burning fat, I mean dietary carbs from your meal, dietary fat from your meal, stored carbs in your body, stored fat in your body, right? You want your body to be able to be like, I can just adapt to whatever. It doesn't matter. You can feed me carbs. You can feed me fat. You can not feed me at all. I know exactly how to run. I am that efficient. Okay, that's what we're talking about here. But when you're metabolically flexible, you can skip meals. You won't have as much hunger. You won't have as many cravings. You will have more control over your food choices. Uh, funny story about that a little bit later on. You will be able to lose weight more easily because you will literally be training your body how to tap into your fat cells pull the excess fat out and turn it into energy, okay? Um, you'll be able to maintain your weight because you're going to be teaching your body how to use all of the food on your plate more efficiently. And I know you might be asking, what about protein? What about protein? We'll talk about that another time. But I'll quickly tell you that in order for the body to process protein, first it turns it into carbs, glycogen, okay? So it's still carbs or fat, carbs or fat. Um, and you also, um, you are, you reduce your risk of developing metabolic disease. And we're going to dive into that a little bit more because again, health is important too. When you are metabolically inflexible, which typically is you can only burn carbs and you forget how to burn fat. Although it can happen for people who go on keto for far too long, where they learn how to burn fat super efficiently and they forget how to burn carbs. So it really can go both ways and ultimately we want both of them. But if you are metabolically inflexible, then what can happen is then maybe you have less energy and you feel sluggish all the time. Maybe you have like hypoglycemia and your blood sugars crash and you get shaky and irritable and dizzy and um, you're hungry all the time and your cravings are out of control and you get hangry and you have a hard time losing weight because you 
your body has literally forgotten what to do with the fat in your fat cells. And it's harder to manage your weight because when you're eating this combination of carbs and fat, your body's like, well, I don't know what to do with all of this. It's just stored as fat, right? So that can happen. Um, and you're increasing your risk of basically metabolic disease. So again, there are really key reasons why we want to make sure that our body is metabolically flexible. Okay. Now I want to talk a little bit more about your health. And this quote that I pull up here, this is from PubMed. So it's from a research on metabolic flexibility. And really it just kind of, again, it just, it just um, reiterates the importance of uh, being able to use fat, use carbs and transition between the two as required based on your environment, based on what life is throwing at you. But I want you to see in that last sentence, it says increasing evident points to metabolic inflexibility as a key dysfunction of the cluster of disease states encompassed by the term metabolic syndrome. Do you guys know what metabolic syndrome is? Is that a new word or is that something you've heard of before? You can either put like new, new in the comments if it's a new word for you. Um, and we're gonna talk or in the chat, let me know. Um, and we're gonna kind of chat about what that is. That's new to you, okay, cool. Um, so a lot of women develop metabolic syndrome post-menopause, post I'll tell you that right now, and even pre-menopause. Um, okay, so to a lot of you, it's new. Okay, cool, good to know. Maybe I need to do a whole uh, workshop on metabolic syndrome, but metabolic syndrome, okay, for a lot of women, it's new. Okay, so it's it's a cluster of, um, it's, it's a cluster of uh, signs and symptoms that uh, indicate that basically you are metabolically unhealthy and you have, a, you are metabolically diseased. Okay. Um, so the five top five things that you're looking for to sort of indicate that you potentially have metabolic syndrome. Number one is abdominal obesity. So basically you pack your weight on your belly, right? Most women post-menopause and perimenopause. Um, so if your waist is, is wider than your hips, that is considered a risk factor for metabolic syndrome. If you have high blood pressure, if your blood sugar levels are high, so you've been told that you're insulin resistant or you have prediabetes or you have diabetes, if your triglycerides are high, so triglycerides are your storage form of fat, or if you have low HDL. So if you have three of those five things, you have metabolic syndrome. Okay. The good news is it's completely reversible with nutrition and lifestyle habits. Woohoo! So uh, we're going to dive into that, but I want you to understand once again, that it is believed that metabolic flexibility and specifically insulin resistance, which we're going to dive into is leading towards metabolic syndrome. Okay. All right. So let's talk about what we can do about it. So I, I wanted to kind of set the scene because I really like women to understand why the information is important because now I'm going to tell you what to do about it. And I hope that you're going to take action. Okay. So there are sort of like five different pillars that are going to impact your metabolic, metabolic flexibility, either positively or negatively, depending on what you do. So one is nutrition. One is movement, one is muscle mass, one is sleep, and one is stress. And I'm going to go back to what I said at the beginning when I said don't blame menopause because you have control over a lot of this, okay? You have control over your nutrition, your movement, you have some control over sleep, and you have some control over stress. I know those can be a little bit trickier. And when it comes to muscle mass, yes, once again, as we are aging, as we are going through menopause, we are going to see um, something called sarcopenia, which is age-related muscle mass, but you can prevent it. You can protect your lean muscle mass. So you have a lot of power. You just have to get into action and you have to make changes to what you're currently doing, okay? Okay, so we're gonna dive into nutrition first because this, in my opinion, is where you can have the biggest impact. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what is causing the problem. So what is triggering metabolic inflexibility? And it all boils down to um, sort of like what leads to high blood sugar levels, insulin resistance, and potentially sort of like diabetes, right? Or type 2 diabetes. So I don't know how much you know, I'm not going to go deep into insulin, but I just want you to quickly understand that 
there are certain things in life that are going to trigger your blood sugar levels to go up. And as soon as blood sugar levels rise in your bloodstream, it is perceived as toxic to your body. Your body can only have so much sugar in the bloodstream. And so as blood sugar levels go up, insulin goes up. And insulin, its job is to pull the blood sugar into your cells, into your mitochondria, where it gets turned into energy, okay? But if you're eating too many carbs and your cells get full, the rest of it gets stored either in your liver or in your fat cells because your body's like, we can't deal with all of this right now, okay? Now, over time, if you are just like, like constantly raising your blood sugar levels, eventually your cells are gonna be like, we're, we're full, we can't take any more of your blood sugars. Like the mitochondria in this cell is they, they full capacity. We don't wanna see you, hear you anymore. And they shut you down. And so the body's kind of like, we're trying to get the blood glucose into the cells. The cells are saying, no way. Let's yell even louder. Let's raise insulin levels. So you get to this point where you have in your, in your bloodstream, you've got too much insulin, too much blood glucose, too many triglycerides because your fat cells are getting fat as well. And this is when we become metabolically inflexible. So what is causing all of this? So I've got a little bit of a list here. So a high carb diet. And I want to quickly say, I'm, I don't hate carbs. I think carbs are important in our diet as long as we are controlling our intake and we're getting the right amounts. Large portions, you're eating more energy than your body needs. Low fiber diets. What happens with low fiber diets is that the food that you're eating, there's nothing to slow down the digestion and the absorption. And so it's rushing into your bloodstream and it's causing this big spike in your sugar and this big spike in your insulin levels. Your meal frequency, right? So how many, how many times you eat in a day? Um, so back in the definitely like even 10 years ago uh, in the health and wellness space, we were all told to do breakfast and a snack and, a, and lunch and then a snack and then dinner and then potentially a snack to fire up our metabolism, right? Who has heard that? I'm sure lots of you heard that. Maybe you're still doing that. That is one of the things that can cause metabolic inflexibility because you're constantly feeding your body. Uh, meal timing, right? So uh, when, when you're eating your meals, are you eating earlier in the day or are you having dinner at 10 p.m. at night? Late night snacking and how long you are fasting overnight, okay? So those are sort of some of the things that are going to cause metabolic flexibility. So what can we do in reverse to improve our metabolic flexibility? So number one is a controlled carbohydrate diet, something that is glycemically balanced. We have to make sure that we're not giving the body, constantly giving the body carbs, 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 because like I said, if your, your body will always choose carbs, if you remember, your body is always gonna choose carbs when there are carbs available. And if your body never has to use fat, it's gonna forget what to do with it, okay? So we need a controlled carbohydrate diet that allows the body to sometimes shift into fat burning, okay? We need portion control. We need to make sure that we're eating what our body needs, but not in excess. And maybe even in a bit of a deficit sometimes. We need a higher fiber diet. We need to add fiber to all of our meals to slow down the digestion, slow down absorption, okay? This is just gonna help to manage insulin. It's gonna help you to reduce blood glucose, insulin and, insulin and improve insulin sensitivity, which are gonna lead to metabolic flexibility. We wanna have fewer meals, okay? We don't wanna be eating grazing all day long. We want to have sort of a meal, and then a break, and then a meal, and then a break. Um, meal timing. So if we're gonna have carbs, let's eat them earlier in the day because the body is really good at burning carbs during the day. And what we're essentially, what we're wanting, what we're hoping is that in the night, when we have our longest fast, right? When we stop eating, where what we want is we wanna deplete all of the carbs and deplete all of the fat, the dietary carbs, the dietary fat, and the stored glycogen, the stored carbs, so that then the body is like, hey, I'm going to go find some energy in our fat cells. This is especially if you have weight to lose, right? <clears throat> we want to have an early dinner. We want to avoid those late night snacks. So if you can have dinner before 7 p.m. and like shut that window down, 
you're going to give your body much more of an opportunity to, again, burn through all the energy and have to go and find it somewhere else, your fat cells. And we want to extend that overnight fast because what happens overnight, especially when you are controlling your carbohydrates um, and, and incorporating some of the strategies here, what happens overnight is that when you first go to bed, your body's going to be burning through carbs from your meal. And then it's going to get through those carbs and the fat from your meal, right? And it's going to burn through the energy that you just ate. And then it's going to be like, okay, what's next? And then it's going to go to your liver and it's going to burn through the glycogen in your liver. And then it's going to, okay, what's next? Then it's going to go to your fat cells and look for stored energy there. So that happens over the night. And it might take about eight hours for that process to happen. So if you go to bed at 10 o'clock eating and you wake up at eight o'clock and you eat again, you're never going to get there. So you've got to extend that period so that you give your, your body a little bit of a chance to move into starting to utilize the, the fat, the stored energy in your fat cells. Am I making sense so far? Is everybody following me? If you can just give me a thumbs up or a yes in the chat or in the, uh, the comments on Facebook, that would be excellent. <clears throat> and you're all still with me? All right, perfect. Awesome job. Okay. All right. Good job. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. All right, thumbs up. Thanks, Mackenzie. Okay, <clears throat> let me just take a sip of my boobly here. Okay, moving on. We're almost done, ladies. You guys are doing awesome. Okay, so before we go on, I wanna quickly talk about signs that you're a sugar burner. And I put this out in the group. Maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't. But again, this is this, these are sort of like the top signs that right now you're burning carbs and your body is not getting into that fat burning. Okay. And I want you to let me know if you recognize yourself here. But this was me in my 30s. I just want to put that out there. So in my 30s, <clears throat> I was like a super huge fan of Toscarino. I was doing like clean eating for like most of my 30s with quinoa and you know. I was doing, I don't know, whatever, whatever was on vogue there, like agave and, um, you know, sticking to whole grains and real food and blah, blah, blah. And I eventually shifted to paleo, but I was metabolically inflexible. I didn't know that back then. I know it now. But for me, what that meant was that <clears throat> I was eating like two, three times or every two to three hours. Like I was a personal trainer at my gym at that time. I had to pack snacks with me all the time. And in between clients, I'd have a quick snack so that I wouldn't get hungry. And, um, and if I did, I would have hypoglycemia and I'd get shaky and dizzy and lightheaded. Um, I also suffered with insomnia, which I now, now know had everything to do with this because my body was waking me up in the middle of the night because it had no, no energy left. Um, and uh, I remember one one memory that sort of sticks in my mind that that I'm like oh my god I was so metabolically inflexible I was hiking with my sister and her family and in the morning before we went we had pancakes so it was like pure carbs there was nothing else it was pancakes with maple syrup and we go on this hike and we had like packed like snacks and lunch and we're about an hour in and my blood sugar levels just plummeted and my energy tanked and my body had no other choice because it didn't know what else to do. And so now my body's screaming at me like eat food, eat food. And I remember I had to sit on in the grass and just like shove back like chocolate and cheese and the sandwiches. And I ate as fast as I could because my body was literally starving. And now when I look back, I realized that was me when I was very metabolically inflexible. Now, if I go on a hike, I can notice sometimes I'm hungry. It's not that I'm never hungry, but as it'll come and it's more like a wave. And I'll be like, oh, I'm kind of hungry. And then it'll kind of dissipate. And that's because my body is like, oh, okay, she's not going to feed us. Let's figure something else out. Okay. So that's sort of like how now I know the difference between the two. But some of the signs is like you're, you're craving sugar and carbs. You're struggling with weight loss, even if you're restricting calories. Um, you have to eat every couple of hours, right? You always have snacks in your purse, at your office, in your car. You don't feel like you're in control of your eating, right? It's like when you're hungry, it's like get out of the way. Uh, maybe you get hangry, right? If you skip a meal, my husband, I used to get hangry all the time. And my husband was like, we need to feed you because I was 
not pleasant to be around. Uh, maybe you've been told that you're pre-diabetic or you have diabetes or you have metabolic syndrome. Maybe you have really poor energy or you feel hungry after you're eating, which is a really big sign of insulin resistance because again, you're eating this food, but it's not necessarily getting to your mitochondria and you're not getting that energy. So all of this can, can all of these are signs that <clears throat> maybe your body only, only likes carbs and maybe it's not even efficient at using carbs, which is kind of like level two metabolic flexibility. Do you recognize yourself at all in those signs and symptoms? Just put a yes or a thumbs up um, if you're like, oh my God, yes, that's me, okay? All right, and we'll keep going here. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about movement. Um, so when it comes to movement, um, Again, there's a lot of things that you can do to restore. Laura said, yes. Okay, awesome. And let's see over here. I've got yes from Susan, yes from Mackenzie, yes from Janice. Okay, awesome. Um, perfect. Okay. Um, don't worry, ladies, we can fix this. Okay, so um, let's talk about movement. So this is the second pillar. <clears throat> so when it comes to, to, to movement, there are, again, things that we can do to do two things, burn through carbs and encourage the body to, to start using more fat, okay? Because again, that's what metabolic, metabolic flexibility is. It's not that we wanna do just fat, it's we wanna have the ability to do both, right? So <clears throat> number one is daily exercise, right? So here's a little sort of um, mantra or something I tell my clients all the time is that, the more active you are, the more carbs you can eat. Because ultimately, when we're active, we need carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are going to be the fuel of preference for pretty much any activity that you do with the exception of walking, which we're gonna talk about. So if you're, if you're active, then your body needs those carbs, but it's gonna use them, right? And that's the key there is that if you are doing exercise, you're gonna burn through those carbs. So you can get away with eating more carbs and still end up shifting into fat burning overnight, okay? But you've got to do the exercise. Now, what kind of exercise are we wanting to do here? So uh, a great type of exercise is sort of like a, a high intensity exercise. Not too long of a duration, about 30 minutes, right? We don't want to, like, we don't want to do too much intensity because that's going to stress out the body, but about 30 minutes of high intensity exercise three or maybe four times a week. And when I mean high intensity, I mean like it is uncomfortable. It is struggle town. Uh, you are breathless. Your muscles are burning. It feels really hard. That is high intensity. And what that's going to do is it's going to do two things. Number one is it's going to trigger something called AMPK which is a pathway that basically tells the body to burn fat. Okay, so we want that. And it's also going to create what we call exercise post-oxygen consumption, which basically is a fancy way of saying it's going to speed up your metabolism. I think someone still isn't muted. If you can check that you're muted, that would be fantastic if you're on Zoom. Um, and so we want that because essentially if we speed up our metabolism, um, and, and the way it works is that it's going to speed it up for 24 to 48 hours. The faster your metabolism, the more efficient you are at burning the food that you eat, right? We don't have necessarily those, that excess energy that's getting stored away in our liver, in our fat cells, wherever, right? <clears throat> so we want, to, we want to create this excess post-oxygen consumption um, to just basically boost our metabolism. We want to do resistance training. We want to be lifting weights or doing squats and lunges and push-ups. And the reason we want to do that is because we want to protect our lean muscle mass at all costs and potentially build more lean muscle mass. Like you heard me say earlier, if we have more muscle mass, we not only speed up our metabolism, but we also improve our metabolic flexibility because we, we have somewhere for our carbs to go. Your muscles will suck up those carbs. And when they suck up those carbs, we're depleting the carbs, which means we can shift into fat burn, okay? Walking is my other favorite exercise because it is the only exercise that really is, your body's gonna preferentially choose fat as a fuel source. 
your body for, again, for most forms of exercise, um, you know, unless it's very low intensity, your body is going to uh, require glycogen or carbs in order to fuel your muscles. And so having some, some activities that really are going to encourage your body to burn fat is going to be beneficial as well. Um, and this is why, like, if you, if you ladies go on like the treadmill or the step machine or whatever, and there's like the fat burning zone and it's like super low intensity and you might be like, oh my God, I'm not even working here. Great. That means that you're probably using fat. Okay. So that's good. You want that. Um, and then the final thing on the list is fasted exercise, right? So <clears throat> this is something you kind of have to train the body to do. And we're going to talk about this, but if you can work out in the morning, especially if you've shifted into fat burn, when you either have low glycogen or you've even, you know, depleted your glycogen, then you're, you're essentially training your, your mitochondria to work out and, and start utilizing more fat. Okay. So these are all ways that you can restore metabolic flexibility. Um, now the other two pillars that I talked about were sleep and stress, and I'm not going to dive into them because we've already been chatting for about 35 minutes and, and, or maybe longer than that. I can't even see what time it is now, but, um, cause it's kind of stopped here over here. How, where are we at? We're at 36. Okay. Um, I'm doing pretty good. Um, so when it comes to sleep and stress, it all boils back down to insulin. So here's the, it's super simple. I don't, you don't even need me to write out like notes for you here. Sleep. The more you sleep, the more metabolically flexible you will be. Okay. That's what it boils down to because when you are sleep deprived, you will be more insulin resistant. So you need seven to seven to nine hours of quality sleep a night. I know easier said than done perhaps, but just think of that as a potential goal. And when it comes to stress, the less stressed out you are, the more metabolically flexible you're going to be because when you are stressed, you are going to see a rise in cortisol and therefore a rise in blood sugars and insulin and potentially stress-related insulin resistance. Okay, so it boils down to getting your nutrition on track, getting some form of movement, right? Moving as much as possible, uh, getting some sleep, managing your stress. Okay. That's kind of what it boils down to. And maybe you're just like, oh my God, Haley, this is all absolutely overwhelming. So we're going to talk, we're going to talk about your action plan now. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to try and break it down. I'm going to show you sort of like what I do with my clients. And then we're going to dial in what is your first step. Okay. So <clears throat> with my clients, I have, I sort of like do three things with them. And ultimately what it boils down to is I want to improve their metabolic flexibility without stressing out their metabolism. So the first thing that I do is my, my first goal is I want to force the body to start using fat for fuel. Okay. And the only way we're going to do that, if you remember from the beginning of my slides, the only way we're going to do that is if I deplete carbohydrates from their nutrition for a short period of time. Again, I'm not about carbs. I eat them all the time. This is like, it's, it's kind of like a necessary evil um, just to heal the body, to heal the metabolism. So if you're just like, oh my God, I'm not giving up carbs, just hold on, bear with me, stick with me. Um, because again, it's not a permanent thing. It is a temporary thing. What we want to do is again, we want to deplete carbohydrates long enough for the body, body to be like, okay, well, I guess I'm not using carbs anymore. I guess I have to use fat. Um, and then we want to we want to just maintain that long enough for the body to become what you might call fat adapted. Where again, it's like going back to my analogy of skiing and badminton. You know, if you had stopped playing badminton and you started to pick it up in your 40s after 20 years, you'd eventually get pretty good at it, right? But you got to train it like more than like one week. So what we, what I like to do is I go low carb and I add in walking. Okay. That's all I do at the beginning. We go low carb and we add in walking and by low carb specifically about 50 grams a day. Okay. What that looks like is we eat protein and we eat lots of vegetables and we add in a lot of healthy fats and adding in those healthy fats is important because 
we want the body to kind of get trained on using dietary fat before we try and get it to use stored fat. Because <clears throat> when we ask the body to use stored fat, if it's not super pumped and it doesn't know how to do it, we're causing a stress on the metabolism. And if we cause the stress on the metabolism, that's when you're going to see various hormonal shifts happening and maybe your metabolism starts to slow down. So we don't want to do that. So in this first phase, <clears throat> my clients eat plenty of calories. They eat plenty of calories. They, most of them lose weight anyways, because, um, because they're naturally controlling their portions. Um, they also see more energy. Um, they see less inflammation. There's lots of things that start happening here. But we do this for about six weeks, okay? So we kind of stay at about that 50 grams a day for six weeks. And if, if you're just like, I don't think I could do that, I'm telling you that if you have the right recipes and you're eating good food and you know what to do, it's, it's, it's really easy. It's really not that hard. Um, so that's kind of the first step. Then the second thing that we do, <clears throat> once we've done that, after the first six weeks or about five weeks in, um, I start introducing those high intensity workouts, right? So I start adding those in, but I want the body to have figured out how to use fat first, because when we do those workouts, I don't want the body just to use carbs. I want it to use a mix of carbs and fat. And we continue with the walking. And then I add in intermittent fasting or shorter ones. Okay. And so this is really important because a lot of women start intermittent fasting before they are metabolically flexible and they don't get results and they feel like crap. You want your body to understand how to use fat before you force your body to tap into your fat cells and turn it into energy. If not, you're not going to feel great. You're going to be hungry. You're going to have cravings. You're going to have low energy and you're going to dislike intermittent fasting. And, um, and, and, um, Going back to those two women, the two researchers that I was telling you about, um, and you may have seen me do a live on this, but they found that women uh, specifically, not men, but women specifically, if they are not metabolically flexible and they try to fast too long, it ha actually has the reverse effect because it's a stressor on the body and it raises cortisol and cortisol raises sugar, which raises insulin. So we have to start with shorter fasts. And we have to slowly build up our fasting muscle and give our body an opportunity to figure it out, right? We, there's no reason to jump into a 16 hour fast. So that's step two. And we do that. And you'll see, I also increase the, um, the carbs a bit. We're working out more. We're having a longer overnight fast. We get to eat more carbs. And then in the third phase, now that we've been doing this for a little bit of time, then I'm going to incorporate the longer fasts. Then I might work my women up to 16 hours a day, maybe even 18, maybe even 20, depending on the woman, right? I'm going to extend their fast, give them more time in that fat burning zone. Uh, we're still going to walk. We're still going to do our workouts. We're going to up our carbohydrates once again, because the longer the fast, the more carbs you can get away with. And we're also going to add in calorie cycling. Now that the body is super efficient at burning fat, now I know that if I, if I add in a couple of really low calorie days, like 1200 calories a day, and not every day, just a couple of days a week, I know that now their body is trained to go and find that energy in their fat stores, because I've done all that work leading up to this. Does that make sense? Do you see how this is more sort of like, there's a process to this. There's, there's, you know, there's a science to it and, and there's a process. Give me a yes in the, uh, in the comments or in the chat, if this is making sense to you and we'll kind of talk a little bit more. Okay. Awesome. And we'll talk a little bit more as to sort of like, what is the next steps? Um, are the workouts in step two and three weights or weights and hit? Um, so what I do is metabolic conditioning. Um, and so basically it's, it's kind of like it's, it's weight resistance. It's resistance training, uh, with very short rest periods or no rest periods. And so we're just going like lunges and then push ups and then plank and then mountain climbers. And then maybe we're doing squats or whatever it may be. And we're kind of alternating between those exercises. Um, and, um, and we're doing that again for a short period of time. So it's kind of like, uh, it's, it's, it's. It's resistance training 
in a metabolic chain, right? So it's kind of a combination of resistance training and HIT. It's, it's, I've, I've put up a couple before. If you go in the um, into the group and into the guides, there's a couple of, of, of sample workouts there that you guys can try. It'll give you a good sense of, of what they look like. But again, they are high intensity. I won't lie to you. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, where was I? Okay, so now that I've given you sort of like these steps, again, it, you know, it's quite hard in, in a workshop to tell you exactly what to do. Um, so what I do want to do is kind of give you some homework for today or for the next six weeks, potentially. But what I would do is I would start with step one. Okay, I would start with step one. So I would start by trying to get out and move every single day. And that can just be walking. It can just be walking. It doesn't have to be anything fancier than that, especially if, you know, you, you, you haven't done anything for a while. You don't need to start doing my high intensity workouts. You can literally just go for a walk, right? Just go for a walk. That's like step one. And again, walking is great because it's, it's low intensity and it's going to encourage the body to burn fat. Okay. And then the other thing that I would do is I would start dialing in your nutrition and figuring out what does 50 grams a day look like. And uh, what I'll do to help you guys out is I'm gonna give you a list of foods um, that, that I would sort of incorporate or stick to um, that will help you stay at 50 grams. Because uh, 50 grams, like honestly, carbs add up pretty quickly. Uh, like a banana is 30 grams. <laughs> and so if you're, if you're not being sort of, if you're not sticking to a specific list of food or you're not tracking your macros very carefully, um, it's going to be a little bit harder to get to 50 grams. Now you don't necessarily have to go to 50 grams. It could be, you could be like, I can't do 50. I can do hundred. 50 grams is like, it's kind of like, it just fast tracks it, right? It, it's like, it's a way of like, sort of like getting it done as, as quickly as possible. Okay. Um, so because again, you're depleting your glycogen. Um, so what I'm going to do is when, when I'm done this, I'm going to take the recording, I'll put it up on my website and underneath, I'll give you a list of foods that if you stick to that, um, it's going to be pretty easy for you to stay around 50 grams a day. Okay. And it's the exact list of foods that I give my clients. And again, if you've watched any of other my, of my videos, um, the formula that you follow is like for all of your meals, you want about a palm of protein. You want, uh, like two, two to three fifths of veggies on your plate. And you want to add healthy fats to that because the healthy fats, once again, they're going to be really important. We do not want to be in a, in a big caloric deficit. When we first make this shift, it's going to be too stressful on your metabolism. You have to add that the fat. Like I can't say that too much. Okay. You have to add the fat. Um, so it's not low carb, low fat, it's low carb, healthy fats, moderate protein. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys some cheat sheets so that you can start working on that. And if you want more help with this, there's three things that are coming up that might be of, of use to you. So number one, um, the phase one that I do with my client, clients, I call it the happy hormones reset. We're doing one as a group. We're about to start one as a group. We were going to start October 3rd, but I've decided to shift it until right after Thanksgiving. Um, so we're actually starting on the 10th. Um, if you'd like to join in, I've, I've done this once before where I invited women from this group to join in just for that part of the program. So if you want to do that, just put either reset in the comments or reach out to me. Let me know. Um, you know, it will include like the recipes, the meal plans, the accountability, it would be paid because I make my clients pay. So I have to make you pay. Um, but again, like if you want to just kind of get a sample of, of what I do with my clients, this, I could take you through phase one, basically. So um, if you want to do that, just let me know. The second option, and I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do a video on this because it's too hard to explain right now. But if you guys can see what I'm holding here, it's not a vape. <laughs> It looks like a vape. It's not a, a vape, but the two women that I talked about, this is, this is the, 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 the biohacking tool that they have created that helps you develop, um, metabolic flexibility. And essentially this is really cool. I got it two weeks ago when I was doing research again for this workshop, 
I had seen this before on YouTube and I was like, oh, it's such BS. But then I actually finally took time to look into it. And I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. Anyway, so what you do is you, 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 you kind of, you take a deep breath, you hold it for 10 seconds, and then you breathe back into the machine. And what it's doing is it's measuring CO2 in your lungs. And the more CO2 that you have, that indicates that you're burning carbs, not fat. And the goal is that in the morning, when you wake up, you breathe into your little thing and you want to see it say, you're burning fat, you're burning fat. Um, and, uh, and then you know that you're on the right track. And if you're not on the right track, it, it helps you figure out what you're doing wrong. So it helps you figure out like, okay, well, how many carbs did you have? And what kind of workouts did you do? And when did you stop eating? And how long did you fast for? And it'll give you tips and tricks for improving your metabolic flexibility. And at the end of every week, it gives you a grade. <laughs> so you can work on your grade. It's super cool. I've only had it for two weeks, but um, I did join um, their ambassador program. And so I get a discount on it, but you all get a discount on it too. So if you want to learn more about this, again, I'll do a video, but it's called Lumen. And you can, again, just reach out to me um, if you want a little discount on that. I think it's an amazing tool. And um, I definitely am going to be introducing it to my clients and, and telling them all about it. Um, and then the third option is you can always book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me. And we can just chat for about an hour and kind of look at what you're currently doing and maybe figure out like your macros and your calories and where you need to work on and um, just come up with some strategies for you. So there you have it. That was my masterclass on, again, maximizing fat burn, shifting into fat burning so that you can improve your metabolic flexibility. And I'm telling you, this is going to help you with your weight. It's going to help you with your energy. It's going to help you with your health. Again, all three of those things. If you can work on this, if this can be your goal for 2023 is to be like, I'm going to work on my metabolic flexibility. You don't even have to worry about the weight. It will come make this the goal. Uh, it's, it's just such an important part of, of, of what you need in order to look and feel your best in perimenopause, in menopause, postmenopause, all of that stuff. So uh, for those of you on Facebook, thank you. Oh, and um, oh, somebody gave me an upset face. So that's too bad. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, but um, again, this is the book. It's Metabolic Flexibility. And uh, this is what I'm giving away. So anyone who commented today, who participated, uh, you still have time. Even if you're watching the replay, I'm just going to pick a name. And this woman here, um, she's a naturopathic doctor. The woman who wrote this, her, her methods are similar to mine um, in that she's going to drop your carbs <laughs> for a period of time and then she's going to reintroduce them back. And uh, the book's really good. It'll do just a deeper dive into how your metabolism work and works and all that good stuff. So uh, for the women who participated on the chat in uh, Zoom, I'm not going to forget you either. Uh, but um, that is going to be up for grabs and I'll announce the winner shortly. So for those of you on Facebook, thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. If you're on Zoom, hang tight because I'm going to end the Facebook Live and then I'm going to come to you guys and see what questions you have. All right. Bye, ladies. Okay, so I'm going to stop share and then I'm going to, how do I stop the live here? Stop live.